Oh, I that's pretty nice. Like just, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Space Rum. Welcome back. Oh, thanks. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Where were we? Yeah. How are you doing today? <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, so we were, we ended with uh, pets and you were talking about Shep mm-hmm. and a uh, really good dog and stuff. Now I'm going to move on. Uh, were you brought up religious at all when you were when you were young? When we were young, yeah. <clears throat> Mom and Dad used to get us all dressed up on Sundays. Mm-hmm. Dad would drive us down because Mom didn't drive. Mm-hmm. Dad would drive us down to the Free Methodist Church on Morrison Street and drop us off. <laughs> and drop you off. <laughs> drop us off. Okay. And come back after church and pick us up. Well, it didn't take us long, me, Lou, and Bruce, to figure out that, hey, we don't need we're the only ones going to church. Why aren't you guys going to church? We're not going anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and we stopped, so we didn't. that didn't last very long. Yeah. And I didn't get back into church until I met your mother. Right. And started going to church, and because uh, her dad was a minister, so I started going to church and being Mr. Good Guy, mm-hmm. cleaning up my act and whatnot, and um, that's that when was I started it. going to Baptist church. First Baptist, yeah. Yeah, First Baptist Church, the one I played on in Cherrywood Acres when they were building it down in the basement before it was even built. I played in there as a little boy. Yeah, at the First Baptist that I know. Yeah. He yeah. used to play in there. Yeah, he used to play in the basement while they were building it. Really? Because it was like, there was like, it was like a maze underneath it because it's just crawl space. Yeah. So it was a good place for a fort while they were building it. Okay. Yeah. And then when you were at church, I remember you did a, you were a head usher. And oh, you, and God, in. the more you do, that's the problem with going to church, the more you do, the more they'll let you do. Yeah. I was the head usher. I was head of the house committee, which did all the maintenance around the place. I was head of the speakers, uh, the collection, uh, yeah. making sure that there was ushers every week. You had to do something that involved typing, because I know that's how I think I got good at typing, because you would say, here, Tom... You can do the typing because you're faster. I don't know what that was about. Do you remember? Because I used to have to type. I don't think it had anything to do with church. What was that about then? I had to type I, something up. I don't remember that. For church? It was once a week at least. Yeah, I, I thought it was for church. You don't remember that? I don't. I don't remember. I, I remember don't. doing the typing, and I, I loved the, doing the typing, so I didn't... What did you type on? Typewriter? I think it was on the computer, but I thought it was for church. Oh, I think we were making the the insert or something, maybe. The weekly calendar? For the, for the bulletin or whatever. Maybe. Could have been. Yeah. Okay. I forget. Huh. So you were religious later on, but not when you were... Well, I wouldn't say I was religious. I went to church. Going to church. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, were you ever mentioned in a newspaper or in the news or anything for anything? Yeah. Yeah. Anything you can tell us about? <laughs> well, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'll tell you the one I can tell you about. Okay. I was in the newspaper with, a f- uh, I think I, got, I think it was a fo- photograph, when I was at work at the Seaway, mm-hmm. um, before all this oh, yes, okay. security and everything, some yeah. people pulled up to look at a boat, and their dog jumped out of the car, it was a poodle, and jumped right over the side of the canal into the water mm-hmm. in which we were lowering the lock at the time so we couldn't do anything about it but the dog was swimming in circles down while we were watching the lock go down mm-hmm. and before we let the boat come in we put over a big uh, jacob's ladder that went all the way to the bottom and i climbed down because i was the youngest guy i was quite young then early 20s and i was fit got down realized i couldn't grab the dog because as you swung away from the wall on the rope, the ladder would come away and you'd lose your balance. So I put my foot in the water and the dog swam over and held onto my foot while the boys lowered the raft. And once they lowered the raft, I got in the raft and then I pulled the dog in. We paddled into the next lock that the boat was sitting in. They pulled me out, the dog out, and the raft out, and then we let the boat come in. So I made the newspapers. The guy brought me back a 40 ounce of rum. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. And that was my claim to fame. You made the newspaper. Yeah, I made the newspaper. <laughs> that was my first time making the newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> and the time that we'll talk about. Mm. Yeah. So, okay. I think you've hinted at this or you've mentioned it a couple times, but uh, who, who were your uh, friends when you were growing up? My friends? Yeah. Well, they all stem back from kindergarten. Mm-hmm. One was Darcy Crop, who mm-hmm. you met last night again. 
One was uh, Dave Jackman, who was my best man, mm -hmm. and I was his best man, who turned out to be a policeman. Uh, one was Jamie Caswell, who still has Caswell's menswear today. It's moved now, right? Yeah, he moved into the plaza down there by the new clean tire at the end of the road, okay. the end of Montrose. Uh, Dave Goodman. And that was about it. We all chummed around together. It was a, it was a five of you, four of you, five of you? Yeah, yeah four or five of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was other guys that came and went, but we all stuck together pretty well. Even to this day, we still see each other. Yeah, and everybody's still alive. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who who was the guy that had the was that Jacqueline? The eye. Uh, Goodman. The eye. Got shot in the eye by Jamie Caswell with the pelican. He got shot in the eye. Yeah, oh. yeah. By with a pelican. Yeah. How'd that happen? Were you there for that? No, I wasn't. No, I no. wasn't. No. Do you know how that happened? Did, was they it was a mistake. They were shooting or? sparrows along the car banks, which isn't there anymore. It's mm -hmm. just a hydro right away. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how he. Got shot, but he did. He got shot and he lost his eye. He lost his eye. Yeah. It yeah. never came to uh, fruition as to who actually did it, but everybody pointed at Jamie Caswell. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking about uh, mishaps when you were kids, you want to just show your finger and talk about that for a minute? Oh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> this one. That yeah. one was uh, cut off when I was 12 years old when I had built a mini bike with another fella by the name of Rob Dallamatter. Mm -hmm. We neglected to put brakes on the bike, and so the only way we could stop it was reaching down and putting our hand over top of the carburetor and, and choking it out so the engine would stop, so the bike would stop. Ooh. So Robbie Dallamatter cut his finger off first, <laughs> same <laughs> finger, and I cut mine off a um, month later, and then our, our, mom, our dads made us get rid of the bike. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, they get rid of the bike. Yeah, <laughs> you both cut your same, same finger. Same finger. Same. same finger. Well, yeah, because it was the same finger, because the same same hand and everything. Because you had to go down and choke it out. I wish we, that you were the first one that did we it. Built that at Twelve <laughs> years old. Huh? I wish that you you said you were the first one, but you were the second one that did it. Exactly. Yeah. I, oh, oh, that looks like. That. Yeah, you can cut your finger off. Yeah. And I actually cut it off because we were taking turns going up and down St. James Street, and uh -huh. I went up and I come down. Uh -huh. And then for some reason, because I own the bike, I thought, well, I'm going to go again. And then and Jacqueline and, and Caswell said, no, it's my turn. It's my turn. I said, no, I'm going to go again. It's my bike. I'm going to go again. And that's the time I cut my finger off. Oh, yeah. So and Didn't even feel it. Didn't feel it. And, but you just looked down and... No, no. I put my hand back up in the handlebars and I could feel something warm running down my hand. I looked and, and the fingers got off. Uh -huh. Did you just race over to the hospital? What would you do? Yeah, a guy, uh, one of the older guys on St. James uh, wrapped a rag around it and said, don't bleed in my car. Don't bleed. <laughs> <laughs> go to the hospital, but don't bleed in my car. <laughs> no. uh, and, and I forget his name now. Didn't find the finger, the tip of the finger. It was just smashed. No, it was just smashed. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, again, uh, what world events uh, may have impacted you while you were growing up? Uh, the biggest one that I remember is the shooting of JFK, mm. John F. Kennedy. Yeah. That was the one. I think I was in grade five or six, and the whole school stopped okay. while I made the announcement, and then there was a minute of silence or so. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest thing that stuck in my mind. Minute of silence, okay. Mm. In grade five? I think it was five or six. Yeah. Who made the announcement? It was over the PA system? Grace. Grizz, the, the, the principal. Okay. We call him Grizz because yeah. he's a contentious old guy. We yeah. always up in the office in front of him. Yeah. Did that. So, why did that affect you? What What was it? It was just emotional? People were crying? It was so horrific or? that it, 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 it really touched everybody. Mm hmm. Because did people like this? He was the yeah, president of the yeah, United he States, was right? Well liked. Yeah, John F. Kennedy. Uh -huh. But he was a scoundrel. He was a womanizer. Came from money. His mm -hmm. family. His his father had made money there in Prohibition. Mm -hmm. um, he was all over the world. There was a lot of them. There was, and they were all in politics. There was Teddy. There was um, Bobby, and Bobby was shot as well. A few years later, uh, Teddy died of natural causes. But there was a whole bunch of kids in that family. But he was president. Mm -hmm. He was. I remember he was on the. He was in the Navy, and he was on a. 
like a little gunner boat called the PT-109. Mm -hmm. They actually made a movie about it. Yeah, he was well-liked. Mm. That's the president. And so when you went home, was everybody talking about it? Was oh, your family affected still, by it? They're still talking about it today. Yeah. Yeah. I think I saved the news. Somebody saved the newspapers for you about something. About an anniversary of it. All those papers they saw yeah, yeah. in magazines and books. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That was a big one. Yeah. John Lennon was another big one. Okay. And he was shot and killed. Yeah. Um, Where were you when that happened? Do you remember I, I hearing the news? I don't remember. No. No. Because yeah, I remember, I've seen his home though, where he lived in New York City, mm -hmm. by High Park. Yeah, that was another big uh, to do. What else was big? I guess 9-11 was big. Where were you when that happened? 9-11? Yeah. Nessa and I were just going in a house in Welland to put shutters in. Okay. When we saw it on TV, we saw the first plane hit. Yeah. And then we stood there, a sec and within a few seconds, the second plane hit, and right away I said, that was no accident, and that it all developed from there. Right. Yeah, and that's when I was going to an install for really? shutters. Really, yeah. In Wellen. And so, after that, what were you thinking? Because the Pentagon got hit too, didn't it, with mm -hmm. that plane? And, mm -hmm. and there was another area where a plane went down and never got to its destination. Right. But the people over overcame the terrorists, but they crashed the plane. Yeah. Everybody was killed. Yeah. And the weirdest thing of that whole story, well, there's numerous stories, but the one I remember was uh, two sisters were uh, taking a plane uh, to California for a birthday party for one of their family members. And the one girl said, I'll pick up the tickets. And she picked up the tickets, and the other girl, sister, said, oh, you paid way too much. I can get it cheaper than that. Go and trade that one ticket in. So she bought her own ticket. So she was on a different plane, and apparently, the way the story goes, the one sister was on one plane that went into the Twin Tower, and the other sister was on a different plane that went into the other Twin Tower. Oh, gosh. So they were both killed regardless. Wow. Yeah, there's some that little is weird. weird stories that came out of that. Yeah? Yeah. You know, I've seen pictures with guys, people jumping out of 50-story yeah, you know, yeah. windows, and, yeah. and people getting trapped. I've got videos of it. Yeah. You, well, you, I've got books on it too. You went to New York City, haven't you? Yeah, yes, yeah. and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the better good trips. Time. Yeah. Yeah, we had a good time. Yeah. Well, he's got to go pee pee. Oh, uh, okay. Hey, Nick. So, was there a typical family dinner? You said that you would have something like a big dinner on the weekend or every was Sunday. It, every, every Sunday. And what would that usually be? Yeah, every Sunday we had roast beef. Mm -hmm. Um. Roast beef, or we had uh, hamburger over mashed potatoes was a favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, stew. Mm -hmm. um, what else did mom make? I guess that was a big family dinner because when I was very small, we started going to my grandmother's on Bridge Street mm -hmm. for family dinners. And um, then as I got older, we started having our own family dinners. And uh, we'd have sit down dinner with the family every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you ate all together. Who, who did yep. the cooking? Mom. Your mom. Mom yeah. did the cooking. And what was your favorite food? Roast beef. Roast beef. Yeah. Roast beef. I, I really like the hamburger on mashed potatoes too. Yeah. You didn't make a lot of that when we were younger. You made a lot of roast beef. We had it once in a while. But not that yeah, often. not that often. Yeah. No. We had a lot of spaghetti. Mm hmm Yeah, my mom made good. a lot of spaghetti, too, because it was an inexpensive meal, and you could feed a lot of people. Mm, okay. Mm hmm What about holidays? Any birthdays or Christmases or anything that stuck out? My 50th. <laughs> Your 50th? My 50th. Why, why well, well, we always had cake and everything when we were young kids. We always had big birthday parties. Well, I don't know if we had friends over or not. It was big anyway because the family was all there and we were a big family, so. Right. And there was always one happening because there were so many of us. Right. So Ma always made a cake, ice cream. Mm -hmm. We always had Neapolitan. Mm -hmm. That was the one where it was chocolate, vanilla, 
and strawberry all in one. Yeah. Yeah. Balloons. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Every holiday was a big event too. Ma always put a big spread out for Christmases, Easter, stuff like that. Had the whole family over, mm -hmm. friends, and she'd do all the cooking. And everybody would bring something as well. So there was a ton of food. There was always a ton of people. Right. Um, mostly I remember when we all were out in Garner Road because um, whether I was living there or not, that was where the Jews always were. Yeah. Right? Ma's house. Mom and Dad's house. Because then it, it became, it wasn't just the kids. It was the Yeah, everybody else well, was yeah. starting to have their families. And um, and Bruce, I remember, had, I'm not sure if he paid for it, but he put the rec room in for uh, Dad. Mm -hmm. So we'd have a finished rec room because Dad had a fireplace downstairs. Right, yeah. And um, I remember Bruce built the bar and stuff. Okay. So all the, we could put a lot more people in the house. Yeah. I so we had a tree downstairs, and I remember a Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah, the tinsel. Yeah, yeah, the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Oh, yeah, I always thought it was really pretty. <laughs> I never <laughs> saw those. I think they were about nine ninety five. No, it had the real tinsel, right? Oh, tinsel! I don't even think you can buy that anymore because Jan was looking for some this year. Yeah, she couldn't find it unless they're all sold out. She says, "I don't think we can buy that no, anymore." No, because now it's always the the. Garland wreaths. You know what happens when you eat that stuff, eh? Don't. <laughs> you get tinselitis. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. Now, but I also remember <laughs> there was a time or a couple times that we had it at a uh, Pillar and Post, didn't we? Yep. Yeah. That we went down there for Christmas dinner uh -huh. at Pillar and Post. And that was the whole family. That was a lot of people, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I know I was running around with cousins. Yeah. Yeah, I think we only did that two or three times. Okay. That was nice, though. Eh? But mostly it was at our house. Yeah. We, okay. We always had the functions, because we either had a pool, or we had the biggest house, yeah. or nobody else would offer. Yeah. So, I don't think we ever went to anybody else's house for a Christmas dinner. Everybody always came to our house, because we always offered, and I loved to cook. Yeah. So, and nobody else stepped up to the plate after I decided I wasn't going to do it anymore, so... That's why we haven't been together. Hmm. Nobody else stepped up to the plate. But we also used to do it at a, a, a volunteer firefighter. Mm -hmm. uh, it um, would be like two Christmas or a couple Christmas celebrations. And one was... Yeah, that was for gifts. That yeah. was at the volunteer fire department there at Stanford, Stanford Center Volunteer Firemen. Because mm -hmm. dad was a member. Grandpa was a member. Yeah. Every Christmas they had all the kids. They'd Santa come in. They had gifts for everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was exciting because yeah, I remember behind that closed door, we could hear the the bells. Oh yeah, and oh yeah, and somebody would be saying Santa's getting closer. And that's where I went as a little boy too. Yeah, Dad, oh, really? Dad took me when I was a little boy. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, and then got bigger and bigger and bigger, and now I don't even. Well, they've sold that building. Now oh. it belongs to Niagara Support for the mentally challenged children. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, I did the blinds and then it too long ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that was fun. And I yeah. do and I also remember that whatever the gift was, they would do it by age and you would always say that I was a year older. Oh so, you get so a, I would get a slightly better more more advanced gift. Yeah. Until I hit that cutoff age and then you said I was a year younger. <laughs> <laughs> then you're a cutoff all together. I mean, how old is this kid? How, how, he fluctuates a little it's gotta be forty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't go this year, did we? No, but that was always, that was fun. Mm -hmm. And did your, other than having the, the dinners and having the things at the either garter or you having it, did you have any other special like uh, traditions or anything like that? Family traditions? Yeah. Uh, no, just um, New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. New Year's Eve, <laughs> back in the day, um, mom and dad would either have people over or have a bunch of people, fam mostly family again, mm -hmm. and their and their friends, the Rasmussens, uh, the Canes, uh, probably some neighbors. But I remember, particularly on New Year's Eve, uh, once the clock hit twelve o'clock, 
My mom and dad would run out the front door with pots and pans and bang them together just to make noise. At, at 12? <laughs> 12 o'clock. We'd go inside with pans, <laughs> pots and pans together. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was a big thing back then. Oh. You know, I don't think anybody ever does that anymore. Oh. Actually, we don't even stay up till 12 anymore. No. No. Unless it was 9. In bed. Yeah, I'm in bed by 9, 9.30, even New Year's Eve. Nine. Christmas Eve, we had another family get together. Mm-hmm. More food, um, stuff like that. So you'd have a Christmas Eve get together and then a Christmas get together. And a Christmas same people, day. or you'd have pretty well, yeah. pretty well, same people. Yeah, yeah, mostly family. Yeah, yeah. And my mom did all the work. She worked her butt off. Yeah. And my aunts would help, you know, clean up and stuff afterwards. But yeah, my mom used to work hard and put on a lot of grub. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. again, everything was at my mom and dad's place. Right. No, we did go to the Rasmussen for parties. I don't remember uh, eating that the Rasmussen other than finger food. Excuse me. And that was the only other people's homes we went to. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't at my mom and dad's, it was at the Rasmussen's home. Did the Rasmussen's have a bunch of kids as well? Yeah. Did they? Yeah, I used to hang with one of them. I uh, was m- one of my good friends, Feneric. Rasmussen. What would, what would Rasm- their descent be? Rasmussen. Danish. Danish, okay. Uh, Hannah. Uh, she's still alive. Um, she was Dad's bookkeeper mm-hmm. at the hardware store, mm-hmm. and then she had uh, Alan, and then Yvonne, and uh, then I think it was uh, Torben, Niels. I think there was one more, but Alan just died. He mm-hmm. had a brain tumor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Real nice family. Mm-hmm. Herb was ex-military, very militant, mm-hmm. very stern. Um, remember the time I used to sleep out at night as soon as school started and sleep out every night of the summer till school started and so did the Rasmussen's and I used to sneak over to their house in the middle of the night and jump in bed with Yvonne the, the, their daughter and I remember her be coming out one night about 3 in the morning to check on the girls and here I am in there between them so we pulled, <laughs> pulled apple did fall far from the tree eh uh-huh, Tom? Uh-huh. <laughs> I wonder what Mickey's going to be like, huh? And he says, shines a flash in my face, and he says, hey, you can go home right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. And you can go home right now. No, I was just, I was downstairs, and I was telling Danny, uh, Danny Cooper, who lives downstairs right now at 6066 Kayla Road, and who's a good friend of Vanessa's, and also now a friend of ours, Telling him about the story with Devery. When here at the house, when, when I didn't think that you, and Blah knows this story, huh. when, when I didn't think that you were home, you weren't supposed to be home, but you were calling for me and you came upstairs and you caught us in the act. You walked in, you waited a couple seconds, and you walked out. She was mortified. Why well, I can't go downstairs? I'm like, so we waited for a while. I came downstairs and you were gone. I'm like, okay, Devery. You're free and clear. You can go home. So she went home, and I, I talked to her a couple of times. She was all nervous. Oh, was it just every? It was just Not every. the one with the two girls? No, no. And she was all worried about coming back over. So we waited a couple of days and thought that you wouldn't say anything. And, and I remember you saw her. I'm like, oh, Devery, it's good to see you. With your clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh, my God. <laughs> Every yeah. time you have two girls up there, uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, and you, out. <laughs> so it's like the time I walked downstairs. If that said some fellow was, you know, I, I the, let's stop the story. Oh. <laughs> this is she not, won't tell me who this was. Is, this, this is day. this is uh, this is on uh, next question. <laughs> uh-huh. So how is the world different now from when you were a kid? Big time different. Okay. We never had computers. We never had cell phones. We never had all the booster seats and and, and, uh, car seats for children that you have now. At one time, if we went on a long trip, you used to ride on the back seat uh, shelf, uh, uh, but on the back window, you used to lay up in there Uh while you went on your trip. There was no such thing as car seats and and booster chairs and and, uh, seat belts. You could stand up on the front seat beside your dad while he was driving the car. Um, I, I, I remember that. I, well, I remember always standing in yeah, at the back. Mom was here. You were here driving. I'd be. That was my favorite place to stand. 
No, in the back seat. In the back seat, like just standing in the seats. There. Yeah. Well, I remember driving my Monte Carlo with uh, my arm around you while I'm driving. Yeah. And you're standing up on the seat. Really, yeah? Yeah, don't you remember that white Monte Carlo with the, oh, uh, okay. with the maroon? Burgundy, yeah, maroon, yeah. Uh, uh, what did they call that kind of top? Anyway, that was one Can of my favorite okay. cars. Yeah, it was a violent. Uh, so the world has changed like that for your everyday <clears throat> things. Security around the world is just unbelievable um the the um, the terrorism and things you never heard about stuff like that when i was young um everything was safe i used to i used to be so proud that we had one of the safest cities in canada which was toronto now it's there's a stabbing a shooting every day up there um Really? Okay. It's just you have to lock everything up. You never locked your doors back in the day. You never locked things like that. You didn't lock your cars. You didn't lock your house. Uh, but now you have to lock everything up because there's always somebody around that's going to steal something or, or break something or whatever. Uh, things are a lot more expensive now. Mm -hmm. Then so are wages. It's all, it's all um, relative. Relative to, to what uh, what's happening, but uh, it's it's a different world out there, that's for sure. It's not innocent like it used to be. Hmm. It's just pretty good room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you'll look at this in 20 years from now and say, it is, oh man, you're getting pickled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so who, who is the oldest relative that you remember as a child? Oldest was my... Aunt Mamie and my Uncle Clarence, okay. who were, well, let's see, how were they related to us? I think it was my dad's cousin, mm -hmm. but they always, they had a farm, they were farmers, and that's where we used to go, and I used to spend my day up in the bedroom, because I had asthma so bad, because everything on the farm I was allergic to. Okay. So I'd spend my whole time up there unless I was going down for a meal or something. I'd go back up to bed and they'd have the vaporizer in the room so I could breathe. Mm -hmm. But I used to look forward to going out there. But I couldn't do all of that. And uh, so they would, uh, they'd have to be my favorite. Because I remember, you know, if, if my Uncle Clarence was out in the field fashion hay and he ran over a chicken because the chicken wanted to lay its eggs out so they would hatch because otherwise they eggs were collected and we'd eat them. Um, the odd chicken would stray out into the field to lay their eggs so they would hatch. My Clarence would run over them with a thrasher and chances are he'd cut off their heads so they'd be running around uh, while they still had nerves and everything with no head. My Aunt Mamie would grab them, finish them off, put them in boiling water, defeather them, and that was supper. She'd make a nice uh, cooked whole chicken for supper. Okay. It would be fresh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I remember that. And they were always so nice to us. And they had two boys, uh, Charlie and Bill. Charlie being the wild one. And uh, a real womanizer. And, uh, yeah. oh, we used to go for another vacation up on Lake Huron. Uncle Harold and Aunt Zelda. He worked for the um, Revenue Canada. Mm -hmm. They had a son. Look, if you saw him and Uncle Dave together, you would think they were twins. Really? They were identical. I remember when I went to Uncle Dave's funeral and, and their son was there, and I forget his name. He's passed away since then. They looked just like Uncle Dave, I'm thinking. Huh? Is that Dave? Yeah. But anyway, we used to go to their place. They had a cottage on Lake Huron. And I remember they had they were up on a hill, up on a, a cliff, and they had a real steep staircase down to the water. The water was always uh, ice cold. But if you wanted to use the boat down there, you had to carry the motor down. And it was a 10 horse, and it was heavy as a, as a young fella. Mm -hmm. um, the beach was always very stony. It wasn't a real sand beach. And I used to carry the motor down because I wanted to use the boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'd have my uh, straw hat on. Uh, I looked like uh, Joe Pesci. And I'd have my knickers on. Back then we wore, we, we wore knickers, which just came down above your knee. Mm -hmm. It was the end thing. Yep. <laughs> Today it looks 
We dick it. <laughs> uh, so we used to go there. My dad used to take us there. My mom and dad used to take us there for a vacation as well. Mm -hmm. So they did what they, what they could without spending a lot of money because there were so many kids. Mm -hmm. So we'd go to the farm one vacation. We'd go to the cottage another vacation. And those were our vacations. My mm -hmm. mom and dad couldn't afford a lot. Having so many kids again. Yeah. Right. Next question. So what do you know about the Johnson name? Do you know anything about the surname? Or? The Johnson name comes from, <clears throat> it's, a, it's an English and Scottish background. Don't ask me when they came over to Canada, but that's the heritage is Scottish and, uh, and English. Uh, Uncle Dave actually did, and I don't know <coughs> where the book is. I'm sure one of my siblings have it, have a copy of it. He actually did the total uh, history of the Johnson clan to when they even before they came to Canada. And I don't know what I did with my copy. Oh, you had a copy? Yeah. I had oh. a copy. What's it could be in the attic for all I know. I don't know where it is. So you have a book, do you think? I haven't seen it for quite some time. Oh. Yeah, I have a I have a copy with the total history of who's related to who, the, 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 the complete tree yeah. from as far back as Dave could go. Yeah. It took him a long time to make it, and uh, and then we all got a copy. Yeah. Like, <coughs> excuse me, like I say, I'm sure one of my siblings still have their copy. Right. I can't, I don't know where mine is. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll have a look. What color is the book? Cream. Cream. Cream yeah. color. Yeah. So like this, nice. this color here. Okay. Well, beigey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> next question. I mean, next question. Is there is there a naming tradition in your family, such as always giving the firstborn son the the name or the of his paternal grandfather? Or is there any? No. No. So all the names, Bruce. Jeff, uh, Jeffrey's Tom. named after my dad. Yeah. His real name is Earl Jeffrey, not Jeffrey Earl. Okay. But we always call him Jeffrey. Right. He never, Earl never caught on. But that's his real first name. Hmm. Uh, you were named after me, of course. Mm -hmm. Vanessa has her mom's first name as her middle name, mm -hmm. Lynn. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm sorry. And, and Vanessa's the middle name and your mom's middle name are the same. Yeah. Uh, so that's the only name tradition we have. Um, some of my sisters have middle names that were my mom's sisters, like uh, Adele. Uh, that's one of the girls' middle name. Um, I'm not sure about the others. Me? No relation. Bruce? Bruce? Which Bruce is that? No, you don't know Bruce's middle name. I forget. <laughs> I forget a lot of things. Good thing you're doing this. Okay. <laughs> At least you can prompt me as to hopefully remembering. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll come back to that. You'll think about it by uh, question 50. Bruce. Bruce. Jeffrey Earl. Earl Jeffrey. Yeah. Mary Lou. I think it's Mary Lou Adele. Okay. I think she's named after my aunt Adele. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. If you think of it. Yeah. <laughs> Correct connection. What stories have uh, come down to you from your parents? Remember any yeah. prolific things? That yeah, I remember my dad, Earl. Yeah. When he came back from the Navy after the war, he had uh, realized that his brother, Ross, had not only taken his car, but had sold his car and my dad and my uncle didn't talk for quite a number of years because of that incident. Um, that was one thing that happened with my dad. Uh, my mom, when she worked in Ottawa, when my dad met her, worked in the Canadian Mint. Where really? they made money. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, and she said it was, I asked her some questions about it, and she said, well, Every so often they do a turnover and they take all the old money out of circulation and they burn it. Mm -hmm. But she said they'd put it, she said there'd be wheelbarrows of money, 
paper money, going to the furnaces to be dumped, to be burned, and there'd be guards wheeling the wheelbarrows, and she said there'd be guards watching those guards, and then there'd be guards watching those guards watching those guards to make sure it got to its final destination without any of it disappearing. Right. right? So, and that's where they met in Ottawa. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, she worked in the Mint. Okay. And when my, my, um, well, going back even further, when my mom was born, uh, we found out that the, my mom was actually an American. Because back when her mom and dad got, when Grandpa Louis got my grandmother on my mom's side, pregnant, they didn't want her parents to know about it, otherwise there would have been big fracas. So grandma and grandma went to a little suburb outside of Detroit to have my mom. So I think my mom was the oldest. Yeah, she was the oldest. So that was the firstborn. So she was, she was an American, actually, and she didn't realize it until later on in life. And her real name, first name was Adele, not Louise. She always went by Louise, Adele, but her real name was Adele <coughs> Louise. Really? And that's when she found out she was American. When she was alive, we could have applied for dual citizenship. For some reason, because she's deceased, we can't apply for it anymore. But my sister, Sue, got a hold of a lawyer in Niagara Falls, New York, and he did his magic, and she's got her, after my mom passed away, she's got her dual citizenship. Oh, really? So if I want to get that, I'd have to ask her who she got or, you know, what the process was. If I had my dual citizenship, I'd have no problem moving into the States. Hmm. You know, no questions asked. The only way I can go into the States now is if I wanted to move my business into the States. Right. Anyway. Right. With all the, with all the weather, there's the other thing that's changing in this old world is the weather, big yeah. time. It's not only changing in Canada; it's changing throughout the world. Mm. You know, people are getting flooded and forest fires and and earthquakes and things that never happened before. We're really lucky living in the Niagara Peninsula. Mm. We don't get any of that. We get the odd tornado, but Barry does. We yeah. we really don't. Was there a tornado that came through? Down here to the uh, drive-in. Clark Town, you're going back a few years. Yeah, no, didn't that happen? No. Mm. During the movie oh, there's Twister. a funny story. If you want to back up, yeah. My dad, when we when drive-ins were big, mm. uh, if you didn't want to go to the show, you went to the drive-in, which meant you could take the car and you could sit in the car and watch the movie. There's still a few around today. Well, my dad used to advertise at the Hollywood Drive-In, which is just down here, which used to be down here on Keeler Road, which is long gone. It's a field now. Oh. It was called the Hollywood Drive-In. So my dad used to advertise on the screen. Mm. And because he advertised, he got a free pass. So any family member could go as many times as you wanted throughout the year while he was advertising. So <laughs> none of us... Guys could drive who I hung around with, except for this one guy had an older brother, Bud Fitton. He had his license because he was old enough. So he would get his dad's car, who had a, a stick shift on the column, to drive it. And uh, ten of us would pile in this car to go to the drive-in, and the lady would look at us and say, You're all Johnsons? <laughs> yeah, we're all Johnsons. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, there's one time we go in and we had George Bell with us. Well, George Bell is a black, black. Oh, woman. no, okay. <laughs> so she looked in the car and she goes, You're all Johnsons? <laughs> all of us? Yeah, yeah, we're all Johnsons. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> Him too? <laughs> Yeah, he's my mom. <laughs> God. <laughs> so that was, I remember the time, Bud said, he ran, I don't know, I think he was mad or he wanted to get in every verse and he couldn't get in gear and he rammed it up and he snapped off the, the shifter. Oh no. <laughs> so he crazy glued it back on. Or yeah. use some kind of glue. And his dad got up to go to work in the morning and went to put it in reverse and the thing broke off. 
He thought he'd vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Okay, time out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>